Hey everyone, this is Structural Steve again, and in this video, I'm going to give a high-level introduction to OpenBridge Modeler. We're going to run through the GUI, otherwise known as the Graphical User Interface, and talk a little bit about my recommended interface setup as far as docking frequently used dialog boxes. But before we get into that, please take a few seconds to show your support for the channel by hitting that subscribe button at the end of any of my videos, underneath the video, or even on my channel page. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and share it. It really helps the channel out. So what exactly is OpenBridge Modeler? Well, it's a 3D parametric bridge modeling software developed by the Bentley Institute. And it was probably really the first viable solution that we had in the, in the US bridge market for modeling 3D bridges. And you know, it has a few big features that, in my opinion, really sets it apart from the competition at this point in time. The first one is that it can import and use the roadway geometry that the roadway department already generates in Geopack, Inroads, or Open Roads Designer. So there's no manually entering of roadway data, and there's really no possibility of entering in the wrong roadway data when you're just importing what the roadway team already developed. Uh, the second one is it's interoperable with Bentley's bridge analysis software. So we're talking Leap Bridge Concrete, Leap Bridge Steel, and RM Bridge. And this data exchange between the physical model and the analytical model really is a key aspect in achieving like a true BIM model status. And lastly, the models can be published to a common data environment. So we're talking, you know, I models or IFC format in the future. And this enables, you know, model to be used throughout the entire life cycle of the project. So during the planning phase, design phase, construction, and even the, the maintenance phase after it's built. So let's start off by taking a look at the graphical user interface, otherwise known as the GUI. So OBM is an interface that is ribbon based, just like most other software nowadays. Something relatively new to the Connect Edition is the concept of workflows. And the workflows you can see are up here in the top left corner. Now, OpenRidge Modeler workflow is where you're going to be doing the majority of your time in terms of modeling your bridge. And the other workflows available are going to be Pro Concrete for modeling your reinforcing, drawing, and this one is used for any of your typical 2D drawing model tools, modeling. This one's going to be used for all your typical microstation 3D modeling tools. Visualization. This is going to be for any of your high def rendering you need to do or adding materials to certain elements and also to export to LuminRT for you know, a lot more in-depth rendering options. And the last one is going to be the task navigation, which is a bit of a hodgepodge of different tools. And one thing you'll see here as I go ahead and select each different workflow, It'll actually change the options that are available on the ribbon here. So I'll go and select the Pro Concrete workflow. And you notice all my options change here the ribbon. So these workflows kind of change your, your taskbar up here, in this ribbon taskbar, depending on what it is you're, you're primarily working on. So if I was working just doing some of the 2D uh, annotations or 2D detailing in my plans here, then I'm going to have all these tools here available that I'm used to seeing in the 2D section. And this is under the drawing workflow. Same thing for modeling. Like I said before, this is for all the typical MicroStation 3D modeling tools. So this is where you're going to have all your your uh, primitive solids, your creative solids, you know, different features and things like that. So uh, again, this is just different workflows, but it's been around for a little while. But again, it's something that some of us might not be used to seeing. So that's all the workflows are. Again, it's just going to be to change the ribbon based on what it is you're working on. Like I said before, the majority of our time is going to be spent in the Open Bridge Modeler workflow for modeling our bridges. So let's explore this a little bit here. The first tab we have here is going to be the primary tab, and this is where you're going to find a lot of your common MicroStation or Bentley product type of tools, such as references, models, level display, level manager, and even properties. And also a big one here, which is why they actually made it a bigger icon than the other ones, is the Explorer, but we'll touch on that one towards the end of the video. Next one over here is element selection. Again, this is pretty common to all Bentley products, so I'm not going to get into this one here. Next one here is bridge setup. So this is going to be where you start off your bridge with uh, importing geometry and terrain. If you want to use the bridge wizard setup, you can use that one here. This will be adding your bridge and setting the, the bridge type, adding units, and setting your terrain for an active model. Next one over here we have is support lines. This is going to be where you're going to be placing your, your pier lines for your, your bridge piers. 
different, a couple different ways to place those pier lines with just a single one on the middle point, parallel pier lines which are useful on a, a curved alignment, or just multiple pier lines all in one shot here. You can also move pier lines after the fact, or modify multiple pier lines at the same time. Next section over here is the superstructure section. So this is going to be where we're placing our deck, placing advanced deck, if you're doing certain situations with a segmental bridge. Here we have our framing plan, otherwise known as beam layout and OBM. Placing beams, this is true for both concrete and steel girders, same tool. And then if you're doing a steel girder bridge, you have placing stiffeners and cross frames as well. Over here we have assigned super elevation information. So this is when you have super elevation information from the roadway group. Instead of having to manually put that in OBM, you can just import their file and assign it to your bridge deck all in one shot. In the last part of the superstructure section over here, we have some segmental superstructure specific tools that are grayed out in this case because I have a steel girder bridge activated in this model. Next section over here we have is substructure. So this is going to be where you're placing piers from your library abutments, any custom piers. So custom piers are going to be sometimes referred to as parametric cells or functional components. Same thing with custom abutments here. These are going to be parametric cells or functional components, but for abutments. Also wing walls, your bearings, and excavation. And this excavation tool is kind of neat because OBM can quantify the amount of excavation that a footing is going to need here and actually build a solid from that terrain for quantification. The last section in the home tab we have over here is the auxiliary tab. And you're mainly going to be over here for placing your barrier wall. But these place point and place path tools can also be used to place uh, different auxiliary items such as light poles, light pole pilasters, and other things that you want to place on your bridge in reference to an alignment or some kind of path or point. And that's it for the home tab. Now we'll get into detail on all these different tools and what each one does and how they work, but just a quick overview of just the general modeling workflow for at least steel girder bridges and concrete girder bridges. You know, the first thing you're going to do is import your geometry. So this is your, your roadway alignment and profile. And then you're going to be importing your terrain. And after that, you're going to be adding a bridge, specifying what bridge type it is. And you'll also be setting that active terrain. So this is essentially just saying you know, what terrain model goes with what bridge type in here. After that, you're going to be placing your pier lines, your deck, doing your beam layout, placing your beam, assigning super elevation if you have it available. If not, you can just manually put it in uh, as a variable constraint here in your deck tool. And then just moving on from left to right, placing your piers, abutments or any custom abutments, bearings, and your barrier wall. And that's the general overview for, for most of the workflows we're going to be doing. Now the next tab we have over here after the home tab is going to be the view tab. And this is a pretty common MicroStation one, so I'm not going to get into any real details in this particular tab here. The only thing we're going to be in here using maybe is for applying clip volumes or managing or creating our saved views that we can use for, for plans production sometimes. After the view tab, we have the civil tab. So this is going to be where we have all of our roadway tools for creating roadway alignments and profiles if we don't have the electronic files you know, at our disposal. And that's pretty common when we have some older bridges that we're modeling or if it's a bridge that we're, you know, we didn't do the design for, didn't do the work for, we might not have those electronic files at our disposal. But we might have the information you know, in a, in a PDF or something like that. So this is where we can come in and actually create that geometry that's needed to build the OBM model in here. So the first section here is general tools. You know, We're not going to be getting too much into any of these things here. The one thing I do run after I have my geometry in here and I'm printing out all of my input echoes and things like that for someone to QC. I'll come in here and print out the horizontal and vertical geometry reports so that you know the QC reviewer can look at all the geometry information and verify that it's correct. After general tools, we have the horizontal. So this is where you're going to be doing your horizontal geometry and alignments. After that, we have the vertical sections. So this is just going to be where you're going to be creating and modifying any of your profiles. Super elevation, again, this is where we can 
create super elevations if we absolutely need to, but most of the time it's just easier to do that in the when you're placing your deck and doing it as a variable constraint. You can also run a super elevation report here. This is going to be something you want to print off if you have a super elevation file that you reference from from roadway. This is a good report so that the QC reviewer can review the super elevations and make sure they're correct. In this last tool over here, this is the cross section tool, and this is one I actually really like to use if I want to get you know quick down and dirty uh, vertical clearances, horizontal clearances, and just kind of clash detections and make sure there's not any kind of conflicts here. And this is nice because you can just put in a station and it'll cut your cross section and it's dynamic and you can move that station around and change that cross section dynamically and quickly as opposed to you know cutting a static view that you have to update the view on or something like that. After cross sections we have the terrain model tools. You know, the one I really only use in here for the most part is going to be the creating a clip terrain model. This is the trim down your terrain and the, and the event that you have a, a really large terrain file, which majority of the time we do, so I use this just about every single model here. After the Civil tab, we have the Analysis and Reporting tab here. This tab is actually loaded with really useful tools. You know, this is where we have all of our reports, such as quantities, input echo, finished grade elevations, beam seat elevations, bearing elevations. You can import camber information from Leapridge Concrete report on that. You have your pier elevations, it'll give you your cap, top of footer, you know, top of pile, tip, pile tip elevations, and all the different kinds of reports in here. The dynamic view by station tool is actually a really useful tool for creating those dynamic 2D cut sections and that can be referenced into other models. And this is something where you, know, you can actually specify a station, a uh, skew angle, have it cut a cut a section, and it'll be a dynamic section, and it'll send that information to you know, another design model or drawing model or, or even a sheet model if you wanted to. And as the model updates, that 2D view automatically updates as well. After the bridge reporting tab, we have the drawings tab. So this is going to be where you're going to be doing a lot of your automated plans production. The settings button here will help you determine what settings and what things you want to be shown on some of these automatic drawing creation tools, such as auto dimensioning, you know, what gets dimensioned, different types of settings, and things like that. The create drawings tool here is going to be for creating your substructure drawings for all your different peers. The create one here is going to be for cutting typical sections of your superstructure. Named boundary, this is for cutting your PE sheets. And element and model annotation, this is for annotating anything that has some uh, intelligence to it, such as a feature definition. And the rest of the sections up here are pretty self explanatory, so I won't get into those. Now, the next tab we have over is the utilities tab. And the first section here is going to be the interoperability tab, which is where you're going to be doing your importing and exporting of your OBM model to other Bentley products, such as Leapridge Concrete, Leapridge Steel. RM bridge and pro structures. The next section here is the ICM section. I actually don't know a whole lot about the, this particular section, but it seems to be for helping exchange you know, civil data to some degree. I don't think it's really anything we're going to be using too much at this point in time, though, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Next over here is going to be your import export section. And this is where you can import and export all the custom library templates you create. And this can be used to share your templates with others, and it's especially important to use and back up before you upgrade to a new version of OBM, since you don't want to lose all those templates or custom templates you might have made. Next, we have the library section, and this is going to be where you're going to be creating and accessing all your custom templates for you know, decks, barriers, beams, custom column sections, piers, abutments, wing walls. You know, material properties, stiffeners, cross frames, and connection plates for cross frames. Next to the libraries tool, we have the AccuDraw and the ACS tools. And these are tools that are actually really useful when it comes to working in a 3D environment because oftentimes you know, we're going to need to adjust our, our ACS to align with specific elements or something else other than the global ACS. The last section over here is going to be the clash detection tab. This is where you can set up clash detection reports to, and run them uh, to determine if you have any clashes between model elements and, and other disciplines. And the kind of neat thing about these clash detection reports is you can actually save them and save the settings so that you know every day you come to the office you can run these clash detections to make sure that nothing new came up 
you know, while you're gone or that somebody else did that might be in conflict with something you're working on. And the next tab over is going to be the parametric cell tab. And this is going to be where you can assign tag information and map custom variables for parametric cells. Like I said before, you know, parametric cells are often referred to as functional components. And what exactly are these things? Well, these are just basically custom cells that you create that have parametric variables that you define and you use to control the geometry of that 3D object. And really only ever create and use them if, we're, if we can't make something with the default OBM tools. So maybe you know, really custom state-specific abutment or, or something like that. But the majority of our geometry, I would say, you know, 75, 80, maybe 90% of our geometry, we should be able to create in OBM with the OBM tools. And the very last tab we have over here is going to be the help tab. The Bentley started making a conscious effort to move all their help file content to a web-based platform, and the OBM help contents file is one of those that's already made it there. It's actually a, a very useful help file with lots of good detailed explanations, and it's fully searchable. I actually learned quite a bit about OBM and MicroStation Connect Edition just by reading through the help file. So I'd really recommend it to anyone who's trying to learn OBM, you know, ProConcrete, MicroStation, or any of their other products that they already have in that, that web-based platform there. And this is also where you're going to be able to find tutorials that you can follow along and practice with as well. Now one last thing I want to bring your attention to is setting up your workspace for success. So there are a lot of dialogues that you're going to be using frequently in OpenBridge Modeler and docking those dialogues for quick access will really help you as you're doing your modeling. You know, probably won't come to any surprise that the ones I'm talking about are the ones up in the primary section of the Home tab, such as the Explorer that I've docked here, the Models, References, my Properties, and my Level Display. Now the one I wanted to touch on a little bit more in depth here is going to be the Explorer tab over here. So the Explorer tab is something that has been inside of MicroStation for you know quite some time, but you may have not used it too much in the past. You know, if so, that's going to change because it gets used quite a bit in OpenBridge Modeler. So the Explorer is used to manage and control project content within OpenBridge Modeler. You know, it consists of five main tabs. You have the file tab here, which displays the content of the files, such as models, saved views, references, and so on. You have the items tab next, which is used to browse data about non-graphical information that exists in the DGN file. After the items tab, we have the sheet index tab, which is going to be used to manage your sheet index which is really what we're going to be using to manage our plan sheets from a plans production aspect. After the sheet index tab, we have the OpenBridge Modeler tab, which is used to view all the civil data. And this one is honestly the one you'll be spending a lot of time in because this is where you can turn model elements on and off by you know, units and elements. So here I can turn, I have decks turned off. All my barriers are turned off because I want to view just the girders in this case. So this is extremely useful for, like I said, turning on and off different element types by your units and spans and things like that. This is also going to be where you find your reports that you might have run and saved for future use. So if I created a, a finished grade elevation report and I want to run that again because the geometry changed, you know, I can just go in, go in here, open this up, and run it again instead of having to redo all the settings of that report. And the last tab is going to be the OpenBridge Standards tab. And this is going to be where you can see the library info with all the feature definitions and amongst other things. Well, that pretty much wraps up our overview video of OpenBridge Modeler. You know, I covered a lot of different parts and pieces of OBM at a very high level view, but you know, don't worry. I'm going to be doing a, a deep dive into every little nook and cranny of OBM in a series of short videos to help you get more comfortable with it and just get a good understanding of each and every tool inside OBM. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button you see now on the screen and give it a like and share it with others. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to them. See you guys in the next video.